Hello, um, and welcome to another video looking at the bizarre world of debunking the flat earth idea. I, um, I don't think I want to make too many more videos about this. It really is just absolutely ridiculous. There's a few more points I want to make um, looking at some of the more absurd claims that are made. In this video, I want to focus on this thing that they talk about, about the horizon being at eye level, even when you're up in an aeroplane. Well, I'm going to show you that the horizon isn't actually at eye level. You wouldn't expect it to be on a sphere at an aeroplane, but you wouldn't expect, to be, expect it to be that far below the horizontal either, which I'll go into. Now, I've touched, talked about this in another video already. Now, you can see it. I've drawn a situation where if a person's eyes at a height above sea level here, then the horizon is down here and it's the same height below the, below the ground again, so this distance here is 2h. Now what I want to do is give you a formula for working out this angle here. It's, this is what's actually called the angle of depression. And what it means is the angle, how far below something it is to the horizontal as an angle from your location. In another video, I've already looked at working out this distance here, the distance to the horizon, which is this formula here. The square root of r plus h squared minus r squared. Now I'm going to rewrite this. This is um, identical to this. Now in this video, I'm going to be rushing through quite a bit of maths. Um, because I don't want to spend, I don't want to go into spend a huge amount of time explaining this and justifying it, but I'll just show you where it comes from so you can check it yourself if you want to. Now the proper formula for this angle of depression here would be the inverse sine of this di distance here divided by the square root of h 2r plus h. So this distance divided by this distance, the inverse sine of it will give you that angle there. Now, that's a pretty messy looking formula and we can simplify it by making a few assumptions and uh, a few approximations. The first thing is, um, sine the minus one of an angle is approximately equal to the angle when uh, the angle is small. I can show you this in a calculator. If, if I, this only works in radians, okay, so uh, put it on, sorry, put it on. Now I've got it in radians, and if you do the inverse sine of 0 0.1, you can see that it gives you almost 0 0.1. So the inverse sine of a small number is almost equal to the number in radians. So that means that the inverse sine of 2h over the square root of h 2r plus h is approximately equal to just 2h over the square root of h 2r plus h. Now, the height is very small compared to the radius, so 2r plus h is approximately equal to 2r. So this becomes 2h over the square root of h 2r. 2 divided by the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. h divided by the square root of h is the square root of h. And that just goes over the square root of r. Sorry, I've gone off the page a bit here. The square root of r. So, I'll say that again. 2 divided by the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. h divided by the square root of h is the square root of h. And you just got the square root of r. This gives you the angle in radians. So it gives you this angle here in radians. Now we prefer to do things in um, degrees. People can sort of relate to degrees better. So to change it into, to change this into uh, degrees, what you have to do is multiply by 180. So you get 180 root 2 square root of the height all over, and you divide by pi, pi square root of r. So this formula here gives you a nice approximation for the um, the angle of depression. I'll move out a bit so you can see. 
So it gives you a nice approximation for this thing here. Now this here, 180 root 2 over pi root r, that's a constant. So we can calculate this constant here, 180 root 2 over pi root r. So it's 180 times the square root of 2 divided by pi times the square root of 396 over the radius of the earth, which gives you 1.29. So this becomes 1.29 the square root of h. So that gives you a nice little approximate formula for working out the angle of depression of the horizon at any given height. And this will work, this will give you an accuracy of three significant figures up to at least 100 miles. So it's a good approximation and it also shows you the relationship between the angle of depression and height because what it means is that the angle of depression falls off with the square root of the height. So if you're a certain height and the, the horizon's at a certain angle of depression, if you go four times higher, the angle of depression only doubles. It doesn't get four times bigger. So the angle of depression is not getting bigger in a linear relationship with the height. It's getting bigger with the square root of the height. So it is falling off, but it's not falling off quickly. Now, we can do a few calculations here based on this. So, say that you're six feet above sea level, so that's six over 5280, 5280 miles, feet in a miles above sea level, then the angle of depression is going to be 1.29 times the square root of 6 divided by 5280 which gives you 0 0.04 degrees. Now I've already done that in another video and 0 0.04 degrees is just not even going to be noticeable. Now say you're one mile high then the angle of depression is just going to be 1.29 degrees. So if you're at the top of a mountain that's a mile high and you can see the sea in the distance, then the horizon's only going to be 1.29 degrees below the horizontal, which I don't think you would see that. Now let's go to seven miles high, because most planes fly about seven miles high. So it's 1.29 times the square root of seven, which equals 3.4 degrees. So I would say in an aeroplane from this calculation that the horizon wouldn't be exactly at eye level. It would be about 3.4 degrees below it. Now to give you a sense of what that means, try the, try the following experiment. Stand up and point straight ahead horizontally with one of your arms and then point straight down to the ground with your other arm. And your arm that's pointing straight down is at an angle of depression of 90 degrees. Now, move your butt, your the arm that's pointing down to sort of halfway between where your two arms were pointing, and it'll be at an angle of depression of 45 degrees. Now, do that again, and it'll be at an angle of depression of 22.5 degrees. Half it again. It's getting hard to draw. And it'll be an angle of 22.5 divided by, divided by 2. 11.25 degrees. I should have done that in my head. 11.25 degrees. I'm zooming on this. Half that again. And that gives you about 5.6 degrees. Now, it's not quite half again, it's maybe just slightly less than that, sort of half that, and, but not quite as much. So, if you go through this process of standing with your arms at 90 degrees, then at 45 degrees, then half again, half again, half again, and slightly less than that, your arm that's pointing down will be pointing down roughly in the direction of an angle of depression of about the, the where the horizon is when you're in an aeroplane. 
Now bear in mind also when you're in an aeroplane, mostly all you can see is cloud cover. So this is assuming that you've got a perfectly clear day, that you're above sea and there's a perfectly clear line of sight to the horizon line. So if you're looking out of an aeroplane, that's, that's about how far below the, the horizontal the horizon would look. Now bear in mind when you're on an aeroplane, it's also quite disorientating. There's nothing in, that you can see in the distance that gives you an indication of exactly where the horizontal from your position would be. And when you look out, your eyes will automatically sort of fix onto the horizon line. So you'll have the sense that it is at eye level. I really don't think that you would have any sense in an aeroplane that you were looking down on the horizon. So that's another flat earth argument that is just um, complete nonsense.